once you've signed off on everything design wise as i mentioned it sees five different engineers it's going to see an electrical engineer to lay out the electrical schematic and do the load calculations uh, it's going to see a plumbing engineer that's going to draw where all the gas lines waste lines and supply lines go it's going to have an hvac um what we call a mechanical engineer these plans are called meps or meps so that's three engineers right there and then you'll have your structural engineer after your soils engineer that's why i hesitated to say five because you could argue it's six because we have a soils engineer that goes out and bores the soil and does compaction tests and says, okay, your footers need to be this deep and your load bearing on this soil, maybe the soil needs to come out, which we call over Xing. Uh, you're over excavating it mm -hmm. and then putting it back at a compacted. more compacted and usually having third party engineers test that during construction right. and, or watch it, what we call lifts. So usually every foot that's down the road. That's once we've broken ground. But those are the things that are called out during those tests between the structural engineer, talking with the geotechnical engineer, working along with the architect and the MEP engineer. So they all do need to talk to each other. And that's where a builder is kind of acts as the liaison because no one's going to own your project the way you're going to own it. Your builder is your second best proxy for that. So if you're having, you know, you're employing a custom home builder, you want someone that you can trust that has the experience that can act as your advocate to say, oh, we've reviewed these plans. This is something I commonly see. The structurals are over-engineered because an engineer's main purpose is not to save you money and build costs. It's to limit liability on his own license. So I just had a project in South Shore, one of the ones we'll cover in a later episode, that had a concrete bid come back at $93,000, a, a, a home that I expected of forty-five dollars to $50,000. Uh, and you get the bid and you go, no, we're re-engineering this house. I looked at it. He way over-engineered it for the soils report. He did footers that were two times wider, two times deeper. What we saw was, you know, the little bit of, you know, liability avoidance. So I went and chopped it to another engineer, paid for another set of structural plans. But that 6000 saved me $50,000 worth of concrete slab. Wow. So well worth it. And then other efficiencies I picked up. Huge. And that's why the build, you know, the building industry is not for the faint of heart. When you've got, <laughs> when you have 15 of those and you make a $50,000 mistake, it can be yeah. can really painful. Costly. Costly. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other engineer, the final engineer would be your civil engineer is creating your grading plan and creating your site plan and showing where all the water is going to go and how the home is going to sit and how high the pad elevations are. And that's your last engineer. And then you submit that to the city. 